and let's see, uh, we got to talk about the steering head. Steering head bearings. Uh, uh, we're talking about the bearings here and their adjustment where, where the steering toggles, okay? Now, uh, steering head bearings are very uh, sensitive to the, to the adjustment on them. Uh, ball bearings, ball style bearings, not very sensitive to adjustment. Tapered roller bearings, I'm, done, I'm making a horrible drawing here. Um, if you've seen them, right? Tapered roller bearing style, very sensitive to adjustment, right? These are extremely crash proof. These are not crash proof. These are extremely idiot proof. These are extremely not idiot proof, right? So pros and cons to both. And actually you'll see uh, many OE bikes come with this ball bearing, right? Because it's way harder for either the mechanic or the owner to screw that up. Now, simplest thing to, to know, most people come across a loose steering head more often than not. And you'll feel a little click in the steering head. You remember when you rode your bicycle when a kid and the thing would clunk like crazy? This, you know, that's an exaggeration of this problem, right? It, basically, if you uh, just roll along in a parking lot and you crack the throttle on and just stab the brake, if you can feel a click or hear a click even, because sometimes it'll be audible, click, click, um, that's, that's a sign you need to tighten that steering head bearing, okay? Now, uh, doing it statically by pushing and pulling, you can be easily confused because brake pads will shift rock in the caliper here, a couple of millimeters, so you'll get a tick, 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 there, right? And uh, the other instance is, you know, brake rotors float. They're on floating buttons, right? So sometimes the rotor will go tick, 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 tick. So it's kind of hard to do it statically and feel it. One of the uh, ways you can do is to put your finger in there at the steering head and try and feel the bearing move. Pull the brake and rock it really hard, right? If it's a very, very slightly loose steering head, you're going to have a hard time feeling it that way. It'd be way easier to just ride it along 10 mile an hour and just dab the brake and you'll, hear, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll almost hear it. So uh, loose steering head, it's kind of giving you constantly variable geometry. You know, the bike will tend to wobble and it'll feel like it's wobbling from the back. Typically, a lot of wobbles when they come from, when they appear to be at one end of the bike, the problem is at the other, right? You know, uh, um, so you, uh, that steering head will make the bike feel, you know, hinged in the middle. Uh, wobbly, loose, disconnected. I mean, there's a bunch of resultant problems from that. So, uh, when you adjust that bearing, um, uh, it's important that you don't over tighten it. An over tightened steering head on a bike will make it track, right? So, if you're, you know, remember we talked about the self aligning feature of the bike, the trail? Well, if the bike is tipped off center at all, you're just driving straight and you tip it off center, the bike will want to keep going one way. It won't, won't line back up and go straight down the road. You, you go, oh, I don't want to go that way. You push on and it'll go, oh, shoot, I don't want to go that way either. If the bike's always hunting going down the road, it's a sign the steering head's too tight, okay? So, uh, um, the, as far as adjusting that, I suggest you have somebody who knows what they're doing help you. But if you want to do it yourself, you need to make sure you have cables and everything disconnected so there's nothing pushing and pulling. I've heard uh, several people's philosophy on how to do this. Uh, Honda all the way down to where they use a little spring scale, you know, to measure the tension on the bearing, like a little fish scale. And you pull on it, it gives you a certain tension reading off of the scale. Um, the uh, steering heads will come bone dry from the factory, you know, probably most people have heard of that. It's worthwhile to take it apart and pack them full of grease. And I'll actually, the, my method of doing this, I'll take the steering head apart, pack everything just full of grease. And then I'll tighten down on the adjustment nuts that are just under your triple clamp, right? And I'll tighten it, and then I'll wiggle it. And you'll find that it'll loosen up. I'll re-tighten it. It'll loosen up. Particularly if you have new bearings, I like to get it really tight. So tight that it's dragging, right? We, I know it's too tight, okay? Now, by rocking it, sometimes it'll still loosen up again, right? And I keep doing that until I find that once I've tightened it, it just stays tight. And then I'll back it off until it's nice and free. And when you assemble the front end, I've heard... Uh, uh, people say uh, to use a bounce test, which isn't a terribly bad method because it is, it's less than arbitrary, put it that way. Um, if the, with the front end slightly jacked up, they'll tip the front wheel off center and the goal is to have it bounce once, donk, donk, right? If it goes donk, 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 it's too loose, right? And if it goes, or, you know, it doesn't even move over too tight, right? So these are just some rules of thumb, right? Uh, and uh, if you've actually changed your bearings, it's not at all uncommon for when you go ride it and pull the brake two or three times for them to settle and then become loose. So it's important to keep a check on this um, because really you can hunt all over your bike infinitely for, for wobbles and problems and it can all be in the steering head, right? So moving knobs all over the place and having the, you know, the, the best guy in the world helping you on the phone or whatever in the paddock, steering head's loose, 
you'll, you'll, be, you'll be searching uh, painfully. Um, and the last thing will be uh, steering damper, right? Steering damper, we just want to make sure there's no air in it and that the heim joints and stuff don't wobble, right? Uh, you know, the little heims on the end. You want to have a solid, well-fixtured uh, mount on it. And uh, home rigging them is, is just a disaster usually. Uh, that's how we used to have to do it, but now that people have come up with these top mount kits, uh, if you can buy one, they're great. Uh, if you happen to have a GSX-R, you can kind of put it in the stock location. Um, there's certain bikes that have made it convenient, but uh, on some bikes it's not convenient. And uh, home rigging them is, is, is hard. It takes a long time. Very, very important to try and maintain stock lock-to-lock -lock travel. Like, so this bike has full travel. Um, the reason it's important to have that is when the bike, should the bike back wheel come out from under the bike for any reason, you need to be able to steer into the turn, right? If this thing hits a stop, homemade or otherwise, and to where you can't steer the bike into the turn, that's when the bike will continue to come around and when both tires get sideways, you'll high side, right? You get flicked off, right? So you want to be able to steer in as far as it possibly can without crushing your hand into the frame. Now this one is borderline wrong, it's right? This bike right here. The bar, like I could crush my thumb here, and this happens a lot. When these things wick in on, some, on people, you want to make sure you've got some space here. Now, some people like, the, they put the, the prioritize putting the bar where they're comfortable over this. Now, in this case, you actually do need to find some way to rig some small stop into the, the factory steering stop. Some people will put a little screw in there. Uh, some people will put a wheel weight so that it can crush, you know, a tape of weight so that it can crush if something happens. But you want to make sure that if this bike happens to snap to the side, your thumb's not going to get crushed against the frame because uh, that would be obviously bad. Um, and this happens to pro riders all the time. See a guy walking through the paddock with a cast on his hand and it's all because nobody set this thing up properly, right, to, to protect the rider, okay? Now, uh, and to demonstrate how important it is to be able to steer in, you never see a dirt track rider high side, right? I mean, they just don't. They always low side. I mean, because no matter how screwed up that bike gets, they can turn the wheel 90 degrees, pretty much, to the chassis of the bike. I mean, they can get it almost completely sideways, right? So as long as you got the front wheel pointed in the direction the bike needs to be going, you're not going to go over the high side. It's when the thing gets around to where the front wheel's pointed somewhere else that you get flicked. So as much turning radius as you can have, I'm all for. Um, and and properly mounted steering damper is, is important to that because if the steering damper itself becomes the stop on when people home rig them in cheesy fashion, you know, bonk, 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 the thing doesn't uh, move very far, uh, that's a problem. So you probably notice a lot of GP bikes flick, always on TV. It seems like when people crash a GP bike, they're going over the high side. Those things barely move. They'll go like this. You got to make a 38 point turn in the paddock, right? 38 point turn to get the bike to turn, you might as well just pick it up and move it because, uh, you know, turning it is, is ridiculous. So, um, uh, being able to steer in, big deal. Um, and to check the damper, I always just turn it up full tight and then move the bars. And uh, if it's got air in it, you'll get a skip right in the center when you change directions. It'll go, you know, you'll feel it hit and start to damp, but if it skips going the other way, you got some air in it and it's worthwhile to have it serviced or bled or whatever. That'll cost you maybe $25 or something to have that thing worked on. Uh, if you've got an Olin's damper, they've got to be sent in to Olin's. They use a special vacuum filling machine and they don't allow independent shops to service those dampers anymore. So you have to send it in and uh, I'm actually not sure of the pricing on that currently. Um, when we used to do Olin's dampers, it was about $50 because they're relatively complicated to bleed um, in the piggyback style damper. Um, currently, I'm not big on the rotary style dampers. Uh, the, there's a couple of companies that make those, and uh, the reason is they don't have any mechanism to allow for expansion of the oil as the oil gets hot. So they actually build them with an air bubble in them. Now the rotary style dampers have come from dirt bike racing where they're not trying to stop the bike from wobbling, they're trying to stop the handlebars from getting ripped out of your hands by ruts and whoops and things like that, right? So, um, but what we're trying to do is stop this bike the wheel from oscillating at high speed and having it turn into a, you know, a dramatic tank slapper, that's one thing. And the second thing is a safety device for, again, having the bars ripped out of your hands. If somebody hits you, um, you get run off track and now you're riding through the dirt and you're you know, going through ruts and things or a gravel trap, you know, anything trying to jerk the bar out of your hands, that's what it's, it's a primarily a safety device. Uh, steering damper should not be used to stop your bike from wobbling per se, right? You should nearly be able to take the thing off and not have it wobble, right? Yeah, it shouldn't mask a wobbling bike, in other words, right? Uh, the damper should be set real lightly. You should barely know it's doing anything in the paddock. 
if you have to tinker with your damper when you come on and off the track so you can maneuver through the pits, you, you, something's really wrong, right? The damper that's over tightened can make as many wobbles and as many problems as having no damper at all on the bike, okay? So um, basically that self-aligning effect we're talking about, if that bike can't find its own center quickly and instantly, totally imperceptibly to you, that'll make it wobble more, right? When that damper is slow and the bike's trying to find its center, it'll actually exaggerate it and make them wobble, right? So uh, damper should be nice and light, right? Bare barely feel it, right? You should know it's doing something, that's it. Because it is an orifice style damping unit. So even though it's doing nothing, we're removing it like this. When somebody comes along and smashes your bar or you're you know, r running through ruts in the infield because you got run off the track, um, that's where it's gonna help you, right? And uh, that's why almost every club in America it's mandatory that you have one because it is a safety device. So, all right, well, this completes the, the first section of the video, um, uh, the component inspection and whatnot. Uh, next segment in the video we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to do the baseline setup on everything. So uh, we'll take a little break right now. Everybody can get a drink of water and whatnot, and, and uh, we'll come back and get going on the second section. All right. <laughs>